So if the works that Hazrat Isa al Islam had, was given, that made him greater than Yahya al Islam, what were the works? What works was he given? He's telling us. He's telling us in the book. The work was a reclamation, a reformation of the Jews. He says there, I'm not sent, but under the lordship of the house of Israel. Only the Jews. Allah Bari Ta'ala also confirms that in the Holy Quran. He confirms that statement of Isa alayhi salam. He said he only came for the Jews. He's telling his disciples, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Means ghair, other than the Jews. Don't go to them. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go ye rather unto the lordship of the house of Israel. Go only to the Jews, Yahudis. That is his mission. Only to the Jews. I said, Allah confirms it. So, why is Qala Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? Why is Qala Isa ibn Maryam? He said, Behold, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. Most certainly I am the messenger of God sent to you all, to the Jews. Confirming the revelation which came before me in the Torah. And giving glad tidings of an apostle to come after me, Ismu Ahmad, whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. But when he came with clear cut evidence, this Ahmad. They said, Qalu haza mubin. This is evidence sorcery, this is magic, this is trickery. But he says, sent unto the Jews. Ya Bani Israel, inni Rasulullah ilaykum. I'm sent as a messenger of God to you, Jews. That's his mission. And again, in the teachings also, his teachings are not for mankind. They are all time bound. The teachings were all time bound. Like for examples, he's telling his people that when they strike you on the right cheek, give them the other. It's a beautiful teaching for a subject people. More especially when they're being ruled by the Romans. And if they try to do anything, they'll be crushed heavily. They'll be killed. The Roman army was in Palestine, ruling the Jews. So, under the circumstances, turn the other cheek. And jane do. If they make you to walk one mile, walk with him too. If they take your coat, give him your cloak also. For the occasion, beautiful teaching. Which they wanted to give to us. You know, the Christians. They wanted to give that to us. When they conquered this territory, this undivided, you know, subcontinent, when they conquered it, the British, they were pouring in the missionaries into the subcontinent like frogs in the rainy season. Their missionaries were coming and challenging our people to convert us because they feared us. Because they feared that at any time anybody will give them trouble, it will be the Muslims. But if we can convert them to Christianity, teach them to turn the other cheek, we can rule this subcontinent for a thousand years. Everybody plans for a thousand years. Hitler planned for a thousand years. For wood in South Africa, that philosophy of apartheid, thousand years. Everybody says, you listen to me, thousand years. So they came for a thousand years. It didn't work. However, that's a different story. So Hazrat Isa alayhi salam says, is the responsibility that one carries, makes him great, or how great he is. The responsibility of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam is only for the Bani Israel. He's catering for the needs. The teachings are not fit for mankind. You can't implement them. Beautiful words. You can't implement it. In practice, is impractical. I'm asking them, come, come, man. I like to meet people who are prepared to turn the other cheek. Where are they? Is that how you conquered my land? Is that how you got conquered Indonesia? Is that how you conquered the, uh, uh, the whole of Africa? By turning the other cheek. But no, no, it's good for the subject people. If we can be programmed, nice, humble, loving, loving, love. They talk about love. I just got this something here. Uh, one young man comes along. While seated here, 
He said, you see, the Christians are giving this door to door. Going door to door. There's every home crusade. They don't sit and wait. They're going door to door. Beautiful, beautiful posters. Beautiful poster. There's a heart. And little, little ones, children, all different races. Some Arab child there and some Eskimo child there and some Indian child there. According to the dressing you make out. They're all going towards this heart, big heart. And it says here, what everybody needs is love. Love. And it says, only Christianity gives love. At one time, of course, we understood love means sex. Well, if that is so, it's very true. Very true. No, no, sex. Because the Christian, look, he's prepared to give his daughters. To the Pakistanis, before I came here, one of the reasons, oh, let me correct Mr. Bawani, he had said that the Saudi Red Crescent Society invited me. That is not correct. I have come at the invitation of, of Muslim aid, the body called Muslim aid. So the day that I get the message from Peshawar, come, come, Mr. Didat, same day I get another letter from Saudi Arabia, from Riyadh. An Englishman who had become Muslim, a revert to Islam, come back to Islam, alhamdulillah. He says, Mr. Didad, I met you when you were in Riyadh, and after that I had my vacation, and I went to Pakistan. As a new brother in faith, he wants to be among the Pakistani brethren. And he says, at some small gathering, I spoke about how I came to Islam. And in the gathering, there was a Pakistani with an English wife who had accepted Islam. So at the end of it, she suggested, they said, look, man, there are other Pakistanis who have British wives, but they're not converted. Would you not like to come and speak to them? Well, the man is gay. He said, look, man, I don't mind sharing with them. So they organized another meeting in Karachi. So eight Pakistanis with their eight British wives, they turned up with three missionaries. Eight Pakistani men, supposed to be Muslims, with eight Christian wives and three missionaries. And this poor fellow was given a hard time. He said, look, I didn't bargain for that. You know, he said, look, I am a simple Muslim new convert. And I was trying to share with them, but they took me to task. He says, I couldn't believe that the Muslims of Pakistan are going wholesale for these British women and leaving them where they are. This is amazing, amazing situation. You see, our people, they, they reason. Flimsy reasoning. They say Islam allows us to marry Jewesses and Christian women. So, our alim ko maine pucha, is ha gunjaish hai. You know, there is a. No, no, this is exact word. I can't translate. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I can have a word in English, you see. Ek gunjaish hai. I believe Gunjaish hai. But I say, you see, the idea behind a Muslim marrying a Jewess and a Christian woman was there that everybody, the whole society was geared to change that woman. The whole society. If my son brought a Christian woman, I'm interested in converting my daughter-in-law. Kibeti, kya baat hai? Come, you know, look, man, we want you to be a Muslim. You know, my, my wife will be interested. Her sister in law, everybody in the house, the neighbors, everybody. What happened? You're not Muslim yet? Huh? You're not Muslim yet? What's wrong? Hmm? Everybody is geared for that. That was the Muslim. But we are not that anymore. We have accepted Western norms where we say, look, mind your own business. If I start talking today to my daughter in law, if she happens to be Christian, my son will say, Daddy, keep out of this. Look, she's my wife, and you don't come in between me and her. I made the choice, and Islam allows. Khala. Everybody, anybody, I said, look, mind your own business. We know this is my business. This is your business. Wallah. It's not like in the Bible. You see, we are told that Kabil and Abil, brothers, Hazrat Adam and Hassan ki do bete, Abil and Kabil. Says Kabil killed Abel, Cain killed Abel. And the Bible says that God questions Kabil, where is Abel? So he replies in the Bible, he's not contradicted. 
He said, am I my brother's keeper? Ki kya mein mera bhai ka charwa ha hoon? You know, am I looking, am I a shepherd after my brother? You're asking me? In Islam, we are our brother's keeper. Anything wrong that you are doing, I have every right to talk to you. If I am doing anything wrong, you have every right to talk to me. Correct me. We are each other's keepers, each other's guardians, protectors, welfare brothers. Not just Musa Kedia Gavar, mind your own business. My business is to mind your business, and your business is to mind my business, to see Islamically that we are doing right. So, today we are not what we were supposed to be. Nobody is. With these Western ideas, that woman must be given her freedom. Yes, beautiful freedom. Everybody must have freedom. You want to worship men, monkeys, elephants, snakes, you have the freedom. But my son, my daughter, no, no, I want to see that they are not led astray. You have the freedom. No religious interference. Allah tells us, like Rahafid Deen, there is no compulsion in religion. No compulsion. Because it's worthless. At the point of the sword, or the gun, or economic for enforcement, you force a person to accept Islam, it's worthless. No compulsion. But when you bring a Christian wife, and you say you love her, I know every of those eight guys, if they are around here, or if they hear one day this message that I'm giving now, you talk to them when you meet them. Ask them. You love this woman? He said, yes. You prepared to die for her? I said, I'll give my life. I'll, I'll, I'll climb the Himalayas. Anything for my dear British wife. Anything. Anything I'll do for her. Jannat ki hoor. Hame ya muwaya sar ho gai. Say, why wait for the other side? We got her here now. Yes. Hoor, hoor, hoor. Yaha milti hai to kyun raha dekhenge hai? So I said, you love her. Oh, yes, you love her dearly. I said, you know, this woman, tell them, tell them, tell these misled brothers of ours that do you know she is still a Christian? He said, yes. She's Ahl al-Kitab. He said, yeah, she's Ahl al-Kitab, but she's going to go to hell. Not that I want her to go to hell, but look, Allah says, Allah says in the Quran, Salakat kafar al-lazina qalu inna Allah wal masih ibn Maryam. Whosoever says, that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is God, is making kufar. It's an act of blasphemy. It's a treason against Allah. The worst sin in the sight of Allah is this, treason against Allah. In the state, we make certain mistakes, you know, crossing the barrier line, don't respect the robo signal, do so many things. We are breaking laws, laws, laws. And you can be called up, you find 100 rupees, 1,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees, but they won't hang you. But one act of treason, you forfeit your life. Gaddari karte hain. Gaddari jo karta, gaddar ko, you got to shoot him, get rid of him, hang him, do something, get him out. And that, in the sight of Allah, is making kufr, worshipping anybody else than Allah. The Bible is replete, describing this as adultery. It's just like adultery. Man is going to forgive his wife many mistakes. You know, she put too much chili in the curry, I uh, get angry, I you know, swear my wife. She did this wrong and that wrong. You scold her. You forgive her. But one act of adultery, I don't know how the Pakistanis feel, but my, she's finished. No good. She can make a hundred mistakes, I can forgive her, but not this. I see her with another man. That, in the religious sense, is kufr. Same, the, the Bible keeps on talking about adultery. In another sense, meaning idol worship. Idol worship, you've taken others for God, that means you have got other, other husbands. So, this woman, your Christian wife, she believes that Jesus is God. He is God incarnate. He is one in a holy trinity with God. She is making kufr. And Allah says, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ Whosoever says that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is God, is making kufr. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ الْمَسِيحُ نَا كَحَا يَا بَنِ إِسْرَعِيلُ أُوْشُرُونَ فِي إِسْرَعِيلُ لَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ اللَّهُ هِكِ عِبَادَتْ كَرُوا رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ Who is my Lord and your Lord. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهُ Whoever will associate anyone with Allah, 
فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة الله في الميك جنة حرام فدم وما وهم نار and the fire of hell will be the dwelling place وما للظالمين من أنصار and for the wrong doers there will be no one to hell that's your wife Allah says she'll go to hell and you say you love her on this earthly plane if nothing little thing hurts her you go go berserk you get upset little thing happening to your wife a pin prick a thorn gets into her oh, you are upset naturally i would be too but for this woman you love her so much and now you know that she's going to go to hell but of course you don't really believe you don't believe that ye to bolne ki baat hai allah bakwas kar raha hai astaghfirullah that's what it means he is telling you wama wa hunnar jahannam mein jayegi my wife you know of course maybe you got some special connection ke hum bhi saath saath le jayenge you say you love her i said you hypocrite is the sex that you're talking about you just trying to say but naam ke musliman bhi hum banate naam ke so i can tell oh, she is fatima ha oh, mashallah and salam bhi karti hai bhi salam bhi karu I am telling you, young and old, if you get a non-Muslim wife, if you convert her, if you can't make her better than your mother at home, my sons, remember this: if you can't make that wife of yours better than your mother at home, better than your sister at home, better than your sister sister-in-law at home, I say, don't tempt providence. Don't take a chance. If you think just like this, that sudar jayega, ye ho jayega, wo ho jayega, no man. You can't teach old dog new tricks. It's very difficult. Here in Sial Court, I was there maybe about a week ago now. I delivered a talk like this. A lot of Christians turned up. There are a lot of Christians. There. Did you know there are more than two hundred thousand Christians on the border with India? Sial Court, more than two hundred thousand. I was telling people when I came what I had information. that there are so many cities in pakistan with an average of more than 100000 christians each and i said karachi more than 100000 multan more than 100000 lahore more than 100000 i said sialkot more than 100 so somebody said no 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 sialkot more than 200000 and they turned up in good numbers and they asked questions we enjoy that there was a major nasir major nasir what do you think muslim or christian the name what does it tell you Muslim, Nasser, our Nasser was that Jamal Abdul Nasser. I forgot. Egypt, in the Nasser, Muslim. They give you Abdul Subhan, Muslim, Murtad, Sultan Muhammad, Murtad, K K Alawi, Murtad. You are getting caught out with names now. We are all getting caught out with names. But what's your name? Is a Abdul Halim. Abdul Halim is a Murtad. He says Abdul Halim, but then among the Christians, it's John Abdul Halim. You see, or Sultan Muhammad, and the Christians are Sultan Muhammad Paul. That makes him a Christian. But, but when he, ah, when you ask him, in Pakistan, the amount of Christians are meeting with Muslim names, you can make out, and they come and speak beautiful Urdu, and they wear the kameez and the sh- shalwar. At my previous meeting. Question time. One young man comes along. I didn't know he was a Christian. Beautiful Urdu he's speaking. So I think he is a Muslim. And with that sheer what the kameez or shalwar, nothing on his head. Well, most Pakistanis don't wear anything. So he comes along and he rambles about things and he says, you know, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He's telling in Urdu. Ke uske maane hote hain ke main shuru karta hu main Allah ke naam se. So he says, "Now who's talking? Is this Allah's kala? Can't be. Because Allah shuru kar kehta hai ki main shuru karta hu Allah ke naam se. Is he starting with Allah's name? But now in Urdu he got the better of me. He read the Quranic ayah and he says, 'Now who is? I'm still thinking he's a Muslim. He wants to know. And he rambles on and on and on and on. There's no end to his rambling. So now, what is your question, man? What is your question? Eventually." When you get a chance of getting at him, you answer one or two things and you forget the rest. He came again at the Taj Mahal restaurant. Same trick. He was playing on me. He said he wants to ask the question in Urdu. I said, wait a minute. Did you understand what I said? One and a half hour, two hours I was talking. Did you understand? 
He said, yes. So in that case, I said, you are qualified to ask questions. If you didn't understand, you have no time. Don't waste my time. You understood what I said? That means you understood English. If you understand this amount of English that I'm speaking, then you can ask the question. He came again at the Taj Mahal restaurant. Same trick he was playing on me. He said he wants to ask the question in Urdu. I said, wait a minute. Did you understand what I said? One and a half hour, two hours I was talking, did you understand? He said, yes. So in that case, I said, you are qualified to ask questions. If you didn't understand, you have no time. Don't waste my time. You understood what I said? That means you understood English. If you understand this amount of English that I'm speaking, then you can ask the question in English. So, I was, Kya Allah wala, bhola bhala. I said, never mind. You know, my brothers, you know, bichara, he, maybe he can't speak English too well, so give him a chance. So he's getting away with murder. See, because he knows the language. Oh, I'm bluffing my way through with a few words here and there. Maybe it sounds very, very, you know, professional, but I don't know the language. So, now, the same thing. So you see, he didn't ask, answer my question last time. I said, what was the question? So, he said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I said, right. What did you translate last time? I remember now. He said, Shuru karta hum me Allah ke naam se. I said, that's not the translation. Bismillah means in the name of Allah, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, most gracious, most merciful. There is no Shuru karta hum me Allah ke naam se. Jo Rahman hai Rahim hai. But that was English I was able to see. And the Arab, Arabic saying was, Man qawmin, amana sharrahum. If you know the language of a people, you can avoid their machinations, the wiles, the trickeries. Well, I can't do that to the Urdu speaking fellow, so please don't try Urdu tonight. So, our brethren, I said, don't tempt providence. What you're doing? See our court. So, Major Nasir, Mm -hmm. and some other Christians sounding Muslim so, so the chairman said you must identify yourself but you can't identify he says my name is so and so Mahbub so and so you think he's a Muslim he's not Mahbub he's not a Muslim he's a Christian so at the end of the talk after that we had dinner after dinner we made our Isha after Isha now he says let's go to the car and go back to our hotel very late at night, and there are people still standing and chatting. So one fellow shouts from the crowd, Say, Mr. D. Dad. I say, yes. He says, look, what is the benefit of all these munazaras? You know, you go and debate with the guy Swagad, you go and debate with the guy Palestinian in England, and this what you're doing now, you're talking, and the guy comes along and arguing, debating with you, asking you questions. What is, what's the benefit? So now this calls for another talk, explaining what are the benefits. And man, it's almost nearing 12 o'clock at night. So I said, look, you were sitting there for two hours. Did you benefit at all in any way? He said, don't ask me questions, I'm asking you. So I said, look, these people here, all standing around, ask them. I said, Bhai, did you, any of you benefit at all from this meeting? Mum, glum, gunge. No response. From the Pakistanis of Sialkot. No response. Man, you sat there listening to me for two hours and I'm asking, did you benefit at all? No response. I'm wondering what happens with this Pakistani. Sab gunge ho gaya, Sialkot me Christian ne tumha kya mohar mar di mu ke upar. So, I said, no, I can't understand this. One guy is asking, what is the benefit? The other guy is asking, you know, and nobody is responding. So one fellow says, you see, this man here, he is a big tycoon in Sialkot. He is the richest man in Sialkot. He is an industrialist. And he has a German wife. And this German wife is a missionary. Out of all Germany, they got about 6 million or 20 million women who can't get husbands. He goes and picks up a missionary woman and he brings her to Sialkot, this industrialist. 
and his house is the center of all Christian missions they come along to his house he doesn't come for Salat anymore but he still claims to be a Muslim so you see it happens if you are in that situation your your heart your mind you're getting hurt you any of you has got Christian wives you're getting hurt if your son has got Christian wife you're getting hurt as if I'm attacking you I'm not attacking you. I'm only telling you that look you are not the man to have a Christian wife the society is not geared for that anymore we are not men anymore as the poet says the Sheikh Sahib ये हमारे चेयरमैन साहब शेख साहिब शेख साहिब भी तो पर्दे के कोई हामी नहीं द शेख साहिब यू नो द लर्नड मैन ही इज आल्सो नॉट अ सपोर्टर ऑफ पर्दा शेख साहिब भी तो पर्दे के कोई हामी नहीं मुफ्त में कॉलेज के लड़के उनसे बदजन हो गए for no reason this university student this college student this modern educated young man i getting offended with the sheikh with the mall with the molana मुफ्त में कॉलेज के लड़के उनसे बदजन हो गए वाज में फरमा दिया कल आपने ये साफ साफ पर्दा आखिर किससे हो जब मर्द ही जन हो गए नो वी आर नॉट मेन एनी मोर एंड देर सो मेनी थिंग्स इन फेवर ऑफ दिस वुमन इज द मैरिज ब्रेक्स अप लुक इट कैन ब्रेक अप बिटवीन सिंधी एंड सिंधी ए पंजाबी एंड पंजाबी पंजाबी मैन पंजाबी वुमन इट कैन ब्रेक अप इट कैन ब्रेक अप बिटवीन माई ओन पीपल यू नो गुजराती एंड गुजराती इट कैन ब्रेक अप इट इज है इट्स मोर चांस एट पीपल कमिंग फ्रॉम ए डिफरेंट कल्चर डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड मोर रीजन फॉर ब्रेकिंग अप मैरिजेस इनकम्पेटेबिलिटी फॉर सो मेनी थिंग्स शी इज स्टिल यर्निंग फॉर अर ओल्ड बॉय फ्रेंड्स यू नो द डांसेस एंड द फन दैट शी है there are others who are transformed like maryam jamila transformed a better pakistani than most pakistani women it can't happen but generally it's very difficult kehte hain ki you can't teach old dog new tricks very hard to teach old dog new tricks what she has gone through the average american woman the americans are telling us she goes through six men before she gets her husband the average woman almost every american woman before she settles on her la uh, last and final and to that do us part she she has been through half a dozen other men look it creates certain types of craving sicknesses i say you are tempting providence so a missionary woman and the center of christianity little wonder you get hurt allah is warning you he is warning you about this the factors that going to keep you emasculate you तुमको ना मरद हिजड़ बना देगा अल्लाह इज वॉनिंग यू स्कूल कह दो इनको इन सूर्य तोबा कह दो इनको मुसलमानों को इनका ना आबा हुकुम इफ इट बी योर फादर्स व अब ना हुकुम और योर सन्स व इखवान हुकुम और योर ब्रदर्स व अजवाज हुकुम और योर वाइफ्स व अशीरत हुकुम और योर रिलेशन व अमवाल निक तरफ तो मुहा or the wealth that you have amassed wa tijaratun takshawna kasadaha or the losses that you fear in your businesses wa masakinu tardawnaha or the dwellings in which you take delight ahabbu ilaykum min allah if you love any one of these things you love more than allah means what allah tells you to do his commandments his prohibitions you love anything more than allah wa rasuli and his rasul wa jihad in fi sabili and doing jihad in allah's way do is your consideration your father your brothers your sons your relations hamari jaat hamari auratein hamara maal daulat business if these are your considerations more than you love allah and his rasul and doing jihad in allah's way this is fatar abbasu tum thero you wait for what for gravy no hatta yati allah bi amri until allah's decision comes about for your destructions inna allah la yahdi alqaum alfasikin and is allah will not guide a fasik people you can be praying five times a day and you get the picture of piety a saintly appearance with saintly garbs but if any of these things you love more than allah and his rasul and doing jihad in allah's way allah says you are a fasik You are a perverted transgressor. Now, mind all the black spots that you have on your forehead and how many hajjas you made. But your dear wife, hey, gori gori, hey, banki chori, 
मैं छोटा था तो मैं वो फिल्म में देखता रहा 